My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I'm here with the latest and greatest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. For those of you wondering, Paul is on his way back from a press event. You're going to have to make do with a little old me, I'm afraid. I know you'll miss your titty cum and all of that, but you're going to have to make do on this one, I'm afraid. However, what do I have for you today? Well, AMD have confirmed that 12NM Ryzen 2 will make use of soldered IHS for better cooling. They have also provided support via BIOS for 2nd Gen Ryzen. We also have a spotting of the i5 8500, 8600 and Celeron on Newegg. We also have various Qualcomm contractors making interesting claims about the upcoming Snapdragon 855. And sticking with the mobile for the end of the video, we have leaked benchmark, benchmarks excuse me, for the Samsung Exynos 9810. So, let's begin with AMD and Ryzen 2, shall we? So we have some fairly quick fire news regarding AMD's Ryzen 2 as after some concerns have surfaced due to the fact that Raven Ridge won't have parts that are soldered to the heat spreader because they rely on TIM or thermal interface material which obviously has been heavily criticised. AMD's Robert Halleck has said that second gen Ryzen will make use of solder instead of TIM. And you might say, okay, so why is Raven Ridge kind of getting the shorter end of the stick here? Well, it's because solder is more expensive than Tim to produce, obviously, on cheaper parts like Raven Ridge. And obviously, Raven Ridge is insanely good value for money. It kind of makes more sense. However, for higher end parts like the second gen Ryzen, it obviously is much more logical to use a high quality solder job. So, just so for your FYI. However, sticking with the Ryzen 2 theme for a second, AMD have made a boot kit available for those with M4 motherboards. So, obviously, with this new generation of Ryzen CPUs, we're going to be seeing new BIOS updates. Obviously, they've been you know, heavily bi um, updating the BIOS for you know just performance issues and getting rid of any you know kinks or, and tweaking a little bit that sort of thing. And obviously, they have been updating for Raven Ridge as well. However, it may be possible that some users using M4 and a second gen Ryzen may experience where well, experience an issue, excuse me, where the system does not boot during initial setup. So basically AMD have provided a boot kit to try and get around this issue. And you can find a link in the description below this video where you can find the support link for this. You can fill in your name and all that good stuff and get your hands on the boot kit for a little bit of a guide as to what to do if you're having any issues updating your BIOS or anything like that for Ryzen 2. Obviously this isn't going to be relevant for a little while now, but it is so good to see AMD kind of getting ahead of themselves a little bit and saying, hey, if you're having issues, here's some support. We're obviously going to be updating the BIOS and obviously putting BIOS updates out there and obviously encouraging users to update even if they aren't getting these, because obviously they might have extra stuff bundled in, that sort of thing. But regardless of that, the boot, ki the boot kit excuse me, is available for download, which again will be linked in the description below. So let's move on from AMD to our brief trip to Intelville. So essentially we have four of Intel's latest 8th gen Coffee Lake processors showing themselves on Newegg. So we have, as I mentioned in the intro to this video, the i5-8500, the i, sorry, i5-8600, the non-K variation, the Celeron G4920, and the G4900. And this also gives us a little look at the price tag for each of these various CPUs as well. So we have the 8500 getting a list price of $215.99 US, of course, the i5-8600 being a fair bit more expensive at $239.99, the G4920 at $65.99, and the G4954 at $54.99, excuse me. Now, unfortunately, they do not have any specs at the moment. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But no, sadly, all we have is the prices available. Although, interestingly enough, you can actually add it to your car if you were so inclined, which is uh, kind of interesting. So just a little bit of a look-see as to what you can expect to pay for these various processors, at least on Newegg. Although, interestingly enough, these processors are also appearing on Amazon as well, so you can go and get some UK prices for yourself as well, if you're at all inclined. So, let's round things out with the mobile segment of this video, shall we? And let's begin that particular segment by talking about Qualcomm and 7NM. 
So this particular piece of news comes to us thanks to a fellow by the name of Roland Quent, who, or Quaint, I'm not really sure on the pronunciation there, to be honest with you. However, he is fairly known for tweeting or talking about interesting information related to tech. That's obviously his man after my own heart there. And he tweeted regarding the manufacturing process of the 855. And he said, quote, Qualcomm won't say it, but their contractors do. Snapdragon 855, STM 855 is the first 7nm SoC, probably the one the X24 modem ends up in. Now, obviously, this is a bit of an unknown at the moment, but again, he is a fairly reliable source. And obviously, we do know, or at least we have had reports, that the 845 is going to be sticking with 10nm. So it actually kind of makes sense for the 855 to be like, hey, 7nm, bitches. But obviously, again, this is all pure speculation, but it is interesting speculation nonetheless. However, let's finish this video off with... Samsung. So as I said at the start of the video, we have a benchmark for the Samsung Exynos 9810, which show a pretty interesting lead over the Snapdragon 845. Unfortunately, we do not have any GPU results. However, we do see again benchmarks which show a interesting single core lead for Samsung. So the benchmark I have for you on this one is a Geekbench benchmark and of course that means we have single core and multi-core score for you today. So the single core result is 3717 or 3717 to be a bit smoother with it. And we have a multi-core score of 8839 which of course is 8839 and of course on the screenshot as well we can also see the memory and obviously the time of date this was taken and you can also see the processor just sort of peeking out at the bottom there with the ARM V8. Now I do have a bit of a comparison benchmark for you as well, which is for the Samsung SMG965U. However, as you can see, it is making use of a Qualcomm processor, which is going to be the 845. And here you can see the comparison between the two. We've got a single core score of 2445 or 2455 and a multi-core score of 8312. So while we do see less of a lead for the Exynos 9810 in the multi-core score, we have a fairly significant lead in single-core score. What's interesting is, as you also saw on those benchmarks there, the Exynos does also have less RAM enabled as well. So if you were to, say, give it better RAM, you might be able to see some more interesting results or better results to be more exact and that sort of thing. Now, obviously... This isn't like all well, doom and gloom, the end of the world or anything. However, this is a pretty significant difference between the two. And that level of difference in performance is definitely going to be felt in everyday use. So there we have it. That's your collection of news for you today. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.